1941. Those four numbers, placed sequentially, still look the same. Well, once you count in the fact that it's a Capcom game with a four-digit title that falls within the general time frame of World War II, which means it's going to be a vertical scrolling shmup. And generally speaking, these numerically named shmups tend to be better than average, a frantic and exciting waste of human lives and aviation equipment. No one ever seems to consider wartime economics in the context of video games, or why looping the loop apparently destroys everything, and causes the same structural damage to your plane as enemy fire. Funny how that works. Alright, so the best shmups work largely as an abstraction. There's no particular reason that missile upgrades or clone ships should emerge from the wreckage of enemy craft, but they do, and it makes for a more enjoyable game. I'm not entirely certain how, in terms of weapon payload, you can fire projectiles almost as large as your own plane several times a second without tapping into creation energy or some other hand-wavy solution. Or why, if you hold down the fire button, you can dispense a massive series of homing missiles. Might not make sense, but as the ordnance comes fast and heavy toward you, the last thing on your mind is going to be the logistics of it all. Instead, you're going to be slaloming through city streets and docks, occasionally snagging the side of a building with your wings so you can spin yourself around and fire backward or sideways. Unfortunately, this not being Star Fox 64, barrel rolls are out of the question. It's a great entry into the 1940-something or other series, but 1941 isn't without a couple flaws. First and foremost, the noise. The sound effects are especially piercing, and unless you drop the volume to next to nothing, you're going to want to ram yourself into an enemy craft as soon as you dropped your last bit of health, and that damn alarm sound starts going off. I mean, Pokemon feels better about itself in its own cacophony after hearing this thing. Also, the auto-scrolling in various directions can wreak havoc on what are already some shaky controls. And without a convenient way to fire behind your craft, the oft-used tactic of having enemies come up on your six feels like a cruel, cruel joke. But, repeat after me, it's designed for the arcade. It's supposed to take quarters from you. This is why being really good at these games, designed to actively hate you, feels more validating than any 50 gamer point achievement available today and why it takes a hell of a lot of practice. It would have taken a hell of a lot of quarters. Quarters better spent on packs of 1990 tops, on the off chance you might manage to score a Frank Thomas rookie card. That big herd would be worth upwards of $2 today.